Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for an Unreal Concept, a 2D camera with a dead zone. So we're going to go ahead and look at this. This is our existing camera setup. We're using the 2D side scroller template. We're going to go and run this. You'll notice when we move left and right or jump, our camera is fixed. We can see like below our level. We can see to the right. We could see, for example, the side of our level. Maybe that's not what we want. Maybe we want our character to have a little bit of a leeway before it activates our camera. And that's what a camera with a dead zone is. So if I hook these events up here, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my item and reset this value to zero. And we run our example. We now have our character, like we saw before. But you'll notice the camera's not following him left and right. It actually doesn't follow him until he gets to a certain spot or he gets out of our dead zone left and right. Same thing with jumping. You'll notice it doesn't follow when he's jumping until he gets to a certain point on the z-axis up and down and then it moves accordingly. So let's look at how this is set up. First things first, if we're looking at our character, this is our existing character. In order to achieve this, you cannot really attach your camera to your player anymore. Your camera our character here moves, our camera is attached to a spring arm, which moves with the capsule, and our camera is attached to the spring arm, which is attached to the character, which means it all moves as one. If we're using the 3D system, you have the ability to add in lag, but for the 2D system, we don't really have that ability. Let's go ahead and go into our spring arm, and we're going to disable it so it no longer auto-activates. And we're going to go ahead and look at how we set this up. So I've created a new blueprint. And it's a blueprint I simply dropped into the world. It has a few settings on it. It allows us to determine what we're going to follow, any offset values and dead zone values, and then it does its math. If we look inside of here, we have a construction script. It's really simple. We make sure that the actor we want to follow is valid. The actor we want to follow is simply a public variable. We've set it to be instant editable with our little icon here. That way, when it's in the world, we can choose what we want to follow. In this case, my 2D side scroller, but you could set it to anything you want. If it's a valid object, we're going to get our X and our Z values for our camera. Our Y value is fixed. This is our Y offset variable right here. You can see it's set right here, and that just determines how far away we are from our player. So if I adjust this, you can see it's zooming in and out. We'll set this back to 1400. For our example here, our X determines our left and our right, or our horizontal axis. Our Z determines our vertical axis, or up or down, and of course our Y is our in and our out, or how far away from the player. So for our camera X, we go ahead and grab the actor we want to follow and grab his location and set our camera X to that. For our Z, we're going to ignore this temporarily here. We do the same basic thing. We grab our actor Z and set it to the camera Z, but we also add in our dead zone. Our dead zone is the height, or how far away from the center point of our camera, where we're going to activate our actual camera movement. So in this case, we have a X dead zone of 500, so 500 on our left and our right before it activates, and a Z dead zone of 200, or 200 on the vertical before it activates. Now we're adjusting this based on our dead zone, because if we didn't, let's just say we set it up normally, you'll find it immediately activates when we jump, and we don't really have much of a dead zone if our character is going to move left and right. If we add in our dead zone to start with, our character is a basically, our camera is fixed above our character a little bit. And we have a little bit of a dead zone so our character can move freely without activating the camera. We set our actor location based on these new values. So where's our player? Let's go ahead and look at them and set our camera to that location. And then we use the find look at rotation node to grab our camera's location and the actor's location, rotate the camera along the Z so we can be facing the camera, facing the camera, facing the character, as you can see here. If we didn't do that, our camera would be facing the wrong direction. We want to be facing our character or our actor that we want to follow. Okay, that's our basic setup. Everything else is pretty much the same thing. We're going to figure out where the character's at in relationship to the dead zone, and then we're going to move the camera if we need to. So if we look at our event graph, our first thing is our begin play. So once our begin play starts, we grab our player's controller, we grab the camera here, our self in this case, 
and we set our view target with blend. This changes our current camera that the player is using to the camera inside of this blueprint. And then every tick, we simply get a new X value and set it, get a new Z value and set it, and then change the actor's location, so our follow camera, to those new values. All of our magic happens in the get new X and get new Z code. We're going to go and look at the get new X first. This one's pretty simple. Grab our actor to follow, so our player in this case. Grab his location on the X. Grab our dead zone and subtract it. Is our current camera greater than that value? If so, that is our new X value. This basically determines if we need to move it left or right on the X axis. We do the opposite here, actor to follow, dead zone, add it together and see if it's less than the actor's location. If so, that's our new X. If not, we simply return the current X so that way we're not actually moving it at all. Once we're out of here, it sets that camera X, we do the Z. The Z is slightly different. We're going to ignore this temporarily for now. The bottom part here is all the same. We get the location of the actor we're following. We get the location of the camera. Check and see if we're greater than or less than based on our values. So if we're outside of our zone, for example, our zone could consist of this little box here. And if we get outside of it, we want our camera, if our camera hits that left edge or the right edge, that's when our camera starts moving. When we hit that invisible, here we'll do Shift F1. When we hit an invisible border right here on the camera, that's when our character starts moving to the left or the right, or up and down as needed. Now the thing I told you I was going to skip for now is the fixed Z value. I've also set it up where maybe you want your left and right to be a dead zone, so we want our character to move left and right with a little bit of extra space, but we want our vertical to be fixed. We want it to fix on the character and we never want it to move. We have a fixed Z value. If we go back to our actor to follow, Fix Z value. I'm going to set this to a thousand, for example, and it's going to fix it to a thousand units vertically. Now I picked that because our player is set to 900 right here. So by setting that to a thousand, you can see where the camera's going to be set up. Let's let's go with 800. There we go. Now we can see a little bit of the ground. When we run this, you'll notice our left and our right is the same, but when our character moves up and down or on our Z. The camera itself never moves. The camera's Z value is now fixed like we have our camera's Y value. So this is useful if you simply want to have your levels be a fixed height and you don't want your camera to follow the player as it goes up and down. Like this. See, we can go all the way up and our camera never activates. The camera never moves. And that one's really simple. All we're doing is checking to see if we have a Z, fixed Z value greater than, well not greater than, not equal to 0.0. .0. Maybe you want your Z to be a negative value, for example. So if it's not 0, then we're going to go ahead and set our Z to simply the fixed Z value. Simple as that. It's an early out on our ifs checks. You could always do the same thing in here. You could set a new variable called fixed X value. You can do the same code here. Check and see if you have a fixed X. Return back your fixed X. And then now you have a vertically scrolling game instead of a horizontally scrolling where your X value never moves from left and right. It's fixed on your camera. But the camera itself can go up and down with the player. Think of maybe a vertical level from like the old... Contra game. And that's it. Those are the basics of this camera setup. You should be able to see the code and duplicate if needed. I'll try to include the code as well in the video. Here's one thing to note. This is not using physics. This is just a basic setup using a flipbook system and animation system. If you're using physics, you may need to actually adjust the tick so the camera follows appropriately. So in this case, we're going to go into our actor to follow. We can go into our class defaults. Let me hide this again. And right here we have our tick. This determines the tick interval. And keep in mind, every tick, we are getting new values and moving our camera. However, this tick generally occurs in the beginning of the setup. We might want to do something else. Pre-physics is what it runs. So before the physics simulation runs, our tick is going to happen. But let's say we have physics occurring. Let's say we want physics for our character but then our camera itself seems like it's lagging behind. It's not working properly. Well, you can adjust your tick group. We have a during physics group, post physics group, and a post update work. So depending on what you want to happen in the engine, you can change your tick group. So for example, we go to post, post update work and run it. Right now, you're not really going to see much difference. But if we're using physics simulation, 
for our character, maybe for movement, our camera scrolling may look weird because it's updating too soon. So by adjusting your tick group, you can go ahead and adjust when this camera movement will occur. Before physics, after physics, during physics, post-update work. So that's just a little bit of a thing to note. And that's it. That's a simple example, a simple concept of a 2D camera with a dead